Robert. Yes, I just wanted to pursue a bit more on the, on the health effects. Um, and I think, Mr. Mitchum, you were nodding in a negative way to the idea that mobile phones were, had more radiation than, or more electromagnetic yeah. effect than smart meters. What, what, what was the reason for that? Um, it's a common argument, and unfortunately, it's a fallacious one. Um, a study uh, and information that we've published, um, courtesy of um, uh, Daniel Hurst, who is a senior lecturer in nuclear policy at the University of California in Santa Cruz, took the CPUC's own data, the California Public Utility Commission's data, reinterpreted it so it more accurately represented entire body exposure. And what it showed was that smart meters can expose human biology to between 140 and 800 times as much microwave radiation as mobile phones. You send us a copy of that. Uh, there is a graph on our leaflet which mm -hmm. I will give you and I will certainly send you a copy of that information. And um, has it been peer reviewed? Um, the information was put forward by the CPUC as a means of uh, deflating some of the arguments against smart meters. Uh, Daniel Hirsch um, took it upon his own back to publish the information that, that reinterpreted the information. Whether it's peer reviewed or not, I, I don't know, but it hasn't been um, uh, successfully rebutted, to my knowledge. Do the other witnesses have a view on it? Yes, can I say that um, the science of dosimetry, where you move from the technical specifications of radio waves in the air into what actually happens in people is a very complex and technical science and I'm not qualified to talk about that. Um, but if smart meters gave exposures that were 800 times mobile phones, they would bust the ICNERP guidelines because some of the mobile phone exposures from some of the more powerful phones are hitting up not far from the, 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 the ICNERP guidelines. So compliance with ICNERP is not possible if the exposures are that much. Dr. Swanson may have some more technical. Uh, to give a bit of context, um, the smart meter technology involves two bits of what are likely to be wireless communication. There's the wide area network communicating from the meter to the outside world and the home area network, which is rather lower power because it only has to extend within the home. As far as the wide area network goes, one of the technologies which is being considered for deployment is actually literally the gut of a mobile phone. It uses the same frequencies, the same protocols. So if the smart meter is essentially transmitting as a mobile phone, um, it's hard to see how it can produce higher exposures than using a mobile phone does. And the evidence that I have seen suggests that the average exposures received by people around about the home and in the, the, the environments of the home from a smart meter is lower for two reasons. One is the distance factor, that you use a mobile phone very close to the body and although it is possible, you do not often get that close to the smart meter. And the second is the time factor, that smart meters will only need to communicate over the wide area network for a small fraction of the day. There's quite a lot of conflicting data about exactly how small, and that may change in the future as the technology develops. But I think everybody has agreed that it's small, there's just disagreement over exactly how small. So the combination of a distance factor and a time factor, um, on my understanding, would reduce the average exposure a person receives from a smart meter compared with what they would receive from a mobile phone. So maybe this calculation has assumed constant and close to the body when in fact the emissions are infrequent and far from it's the body. A distance of three feet. And one of the issues is that um, you can't necessarily legislate in, for example, a neighbour's house where they might locate their smart meter. In, in many situations in, in residences in, in the States and Canada where smart meters have already been deployed and heavily campaigned against, uh, many people have found banks of smart meters right outside of their bedroom. So you can't legislate for where these meters are going to be. Another issue is that I think we need to move away from this, this wrong argument that smart meters emit less or expose people less to, to less microwave radiation and that the exposure from smart meters is acute. Um, similar reports showed that... Um, what do you mean by acute? Uh, so um, immediate or short term 
versus chronic exposure. So with a smart meter, you're chronically exposed over a long period of time, day in, day out. Is smart meter is acute. I'm sorry if I misspoke. It, mm. it's, a mobile phone is a, a, acute radiation. So, and you have a choice of whether or not you use it. With a smart meter, you don't have a choice of whether or not your neighbour has a smart meter and is constantly exposing you to the radiation. What if your neighbour has a mobile phone? Um, the likelihood of your neighbour spending 24 hours a day on the mobile phone is low. But would the smart meter be on 24 hours a day? Yes. But it's um, transmitting. So, excuse me, if I may answer the question. Um, a, a court case in California um, uh, resulted in disclosure of information that smart meters can emit up to 190,000 pulses of intense microwave radiation per day. And these pulses are so short-lived that taken together and sandwiched together in the way that some of these arguments are being put forward shows that the average exposure is very short in the same way that um, um, the bullet from a rifle, your exposure to that is very short-lived, but that tiny fraction of the time where it enters your body and does damage you is very limited. You that there's some similarity between the effect of a bullet from a rifle and the effect of a smart meter. Why not? Well, a bullet from a rifle kills you instantly normally, doesn't it? Uh, well, yeah. And so people are going to die instantly from having a smart meter in their neighbour's house. That's a ridiculous statement. Uh, I'm, I'm making an equivocation to um, the difference between acute and then um, averaging a number of acute exposures into a short amount of time. I'm, so, I'm arguing that it's a fallacious argument and unfortunately what is not being taken into account is, is that these pulses are incredibly damaging. I think also I'd like to raise the um, query about the um, ICNIRP guidelines, which actually which were developed in 1998, but they are not designed, they were never designed to protect against damage from chronic, low-level, long-term exposure. If you are following the ICNIRP guidelines, you can guarantee that you will not, in, in a period of six minutes, heat up or get an electric shock. That is the only thing that they will protect you against. So they are not fit for purpose for actually um, protecting us against chronic, long-term, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a, of the year, exposure to a lower level of radiation, which has been shown in many studies um, to have biological effects at levels thousands of times lower than the um, ICNIRP guidelines. And actually 40% of the world's population have chosen to have exposure guidelines which are much more rigorous than the UK. We follow the ICNIRP guidelines, which are 9 watts per metre squared. Russia and Italy have gone for 0.1 watts per metre squared, so that's about 100 times lower. And Italy's got smart meters. Sorry? Uh, Italy's got smart meters. They're wired. They're wired. They're, all, they're, they're wired in through the power supply, and apparently there was very little resistance to them going in. Um, the same has happened in Idaho. There was a lot of public resistance. So they've gone for fully wired smart meters, which basically completely eliminate this, this risk to public health, which we really can't be sure at the moment whether it could be disastrous. The Bioinitiative report that's just been released um, in 2012 has called for um, safety levels of 0 0.000005 watts per meter squared, which is hundreds, I think it's hundreds of thousands times lower than the ICNIRP, and that's based on the fact that biological effects have been found at levels just above 0 0.000005. So I don't think just sticking to the guidelines um, is necessarily particularly helpful.